Good afternoon and welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Connie Petrusky and Kathy Reeser.
to St. Luke's Chapel. Those who are in chapel with us, please join us at the altar for communion. Those at home may want to grab a glass of wine or some juice and a piece of bread or a cracker and share in the sacraments when we participate in the sacraments. Let us pray. God, we come to you in this hour of worship. We give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord, you may be seated. Praise to you, O Christ. Our prayers today, let us remember those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Connie Petrusky, whose funeral was yesterday. She was 57 years old and died very suddenly in her sleep this week. And Kathy Reeser, uh, Sandy Makla asked me to do prayers for her. It was um, her late boyfriend's sister, Kathy Reeser was, so Roger Martin's sister. So uh, our prayers are with them. After church, we're having our birthday luncheon downstairs or dinner downstairs. Do join us if you can. Uh, and sorry, grab a quick bite before you're off for the evening. Are there other announcements? Is everyone able to stay warm enough? <laughs> Getting a little difficult, it is. But that's the way it is. We can't. We can change the weather by being a little bit more environmentally aware. I think it's going to take quite a few years. I think, but we've done some damage to our environment. I think so. We'll pray on that. That's one thing we can do. Frank is with us back after having surgery on his leg, and he's very much with us. He's not dancing yet, but will be soon. So Frank, welcome back. Any other announcements? This morning as I was doing my morning prayers, I had a 
something come to me that I have said often, and it's part of my recovery, spiritual recovery program for myself. And it's let go and let God. And that seems so foreign to human beings, to let go and let God. Especially when we're in, in charge of our own being and we only really turn to God in great need. But that's not true. We all walk knowing that God walks with us. We may not always acknowledge that, but to let go and let God means to let go and let life unfold the way God intends for it. I've witnessed so many people that were unable to let go and let God. And they came to a crisis in their life that stopped them in their tracks. Might have been the death of a loved one. Might have been the loss of a job. Might have been a divorce. Might have been an accident. But they couldn't let go and let God. They maintained it. People that live in the past rather than enjoying the present. And there's one thing about the past. We can't change it. You often hear me refer to the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. For years, on New Year's Eve, I would pray, God, I'm going to lose weight this year. I got it all figured out. Grant me the courage to change the things I can. And a week later, I haven't lost any weight. I called on God to help me, and he didn't help me. I didn't think he helped me. But yet he gave me his love, even though I may not have kept a promise to myself or a promise to God. As we look at ourselves, how many times have we promised God I don't know about any of you here, but how many times in my youth especially did I say to God, if this works out the way I want it, I will go to church every Sunday for the rest of my life. And I might even go twice on some Sundays. Just let it turn out the way it, I want it to. In other words, let me be God you step aside and I'll be God. And that's not the way it works. When we contemplate life, we often get angry with God. We often get angry with the God of our understanding. If we fall into sudden sorrow or sadness or crisis. Why would God do this to me? Is what comes over our lips. Why would God do this to me? And we forget that we're humans. Why would God allow a 33-year-old man who was healing people, who was loving people, why would he allow them to crucify him? The horrific death of crucifixion. That wasn't God. That was humanity that did that. 
because they didn't understand the Spirit of God that dwelt in them. And God had to sacrifice His only Son so that we could become aware of that. And also that we could be aware that what gives our being purpose, what gives our being identity, is the Spirit of God that dwells in us. That doesn't die. Just because the body can't live on, the Spirit doesn't die. And he proves that to us by appearing after his death to so many people. But I maintain as a human being that to let go and let God is one of the most difficult things that humans can do. And it's even more difficult for some than for others. As we look at the world around us, we can see the words from the cross more vividly. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And I reflect on those words because I'm beginning to do some writing about my journey through the priesthood, my journey through the ministry. And when I was rejected, how terrible I felt. And then I heard the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And my ministry has touched more churches and more lives than it would have had I been ordained in the church that I was pursuing. And now in my heart I can say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they did. I would have been a good priest for the church. But I chose other means to be ordained. And that's the way God wanted me to go. And I had to resign myself that it wouldn't be my way, it would be God's way. And I stumbled and fell many times, did many things, had a lot of bruises. But here I am at St. Luke's. And I'm here because I let God lead me. And it wasn't easy. And I always, in the morning, when I do my prayers in the morning, I always thank God for allowing me to see another day. And please put me in the direction I need to go. Because I sometimes get lost. I trust God's GPS where I don't trust mine. Mine usually leads to a dead end. Let go. Let God. Don't be stuck with something you cannot change. Accept the things in your life. Have courage to change those things if they need changing and it's humanly possible. But have the wisdom to listen to God. Things happened in my life that I didn't want to happen. But I had no, no control over that. It was part of the human experience. But I'm so glad I've had a faithful journey since about the age of seven. Because I could cuss and swear at God and he would still embrace me. I could say to Jesus, I don't understand any of this. Why do I have to go through this? And he would put his arm around me and say, come on, 
we'll walk together and we'll find out why you have to go through this. And as you age in your ears, you can look back and see the times that Jesus held you up, that he embraced you and whispered in your ear, let go and let God. Open your heart in your journey for the direction you need and the path you need to take. As your heart beats in your chest, trust that God is right there, supporting the life that you need. We all have had tragedies, we'll all have more tragedies. But a person without faith will have a more tragic life than those with faith. And the wonderful thing about God and His Son Jesus is that they know us. They know us. Not even by name, they know us by spirit. Because they created us. And we have to let go and let God. We have to do our share. God helps those that help themselves. And there's been times that I wasn't really akin to helping myself every New Year's Eve for years when I promised myself I'd lose weight. God didn't give me the right diet. Oh, I didn't give myself the right diet. I needed the diligence, the discipline, and the patience, and the desire to want to change. So as God tells us, let go and let God, he's also telling us to listen to the Spirit of God that dwells in us. And if there's a tragedy, we can't long for things to change because it's already happened. But we can appreciate the love that's in our life, the love that surrounds us, the love that was surrounding us by a person who may no longer be with us. Their love doesn't change. And they wouldn't want us to linger in life mourning them. They would want us to appreciate their life with the wisdom and the understanding that they gave us. But most of all, the love that they gave us. So let us go forth in peace knowing that that love is still there. And that love is still there. It didn't just happen with Jesus. Jesus told us time and time again that you will live after this life. You will be around those you love. Those you love will be around you. And his example of life, death, and the life hereafter gives us the hope that we need to continue our journey. Embrace the gifts that God gives us. And when you're having difficult times, visualize Jesus walking with you with his arm around you. And sometimes you might have to reach up and hold his hand just to know he's there. But do that. And you'll find out that he's always there. And it's that faith that keeps us going. This week as I awakened and endeavored to take those first 10 steps from the bed, which is 
rather difficult as you get older. I said, thank you, God. At least I didn't have to have chemotherapy today. At least I didn't have to have radiation. At least I'm not crippled from my birth defect. You have made me whole in body. Continue to make me whole in spirit so that we can continue to enjoy this creation together. I look so forward to church on Saturdays because I know I'm loved and hopefully you know you're loved by me. And that charges my battery for the next week. And God brought me here in a roundabout way. Some bumps and some bruises. But I made it, and for that I am so grateful. So let us all go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share together, stand and share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The alms basin is in the back of the church for those who can make the donations. Uh, to continue to support St. Luke's. Thank you.
God, we ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that may, we may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's church and the world. You may sit or kneel. God, we come before you all through this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We ask that you help us to think of the generations yet to come as we can conserve our environment and make it a better place in which to live for those that follow us. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, that that war may d diminish and that they may once again live in a free democratic society as they see. We trust through faith that you will touch all people with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for Connie Petruski, Kathy Reeser. And we trust your faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and all the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have now loved you with our whole heart. We have now loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. In chapel, let us nod peace to one another. At home, embrace those you love with your peace. Savior Jesus Christ took bread, 
When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends. And he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies, in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those who would like to share in the sacraments, if you would come forward. Yeah. 
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food of the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For well, God, we ask you to be with us in the days ahead. We pray that the weather will be conducive to a comfortable summer. We pray for the people of the Ukraine. We pray, pray for our own country, that we may come together in a bond of love that will see us through for generations yet to come. We pray for our service and men and women harbor them in safety till they return to their homes. We give thanks for all that you provide for us. We ask your blessing upon the food that we're about to eat. We ask you to bless those who have had a birthday this month and that they may continue to serve you in life. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is number 29, in verses 1, 2, and 3.